Programmers do kung fu fighting To ride good fast as lightning Okay, so I'm pretty much confident that my implementation works and that if I go to refactor the implementation it will still work if all the test cases work. So let's go for some refactoring because I actually think that this can be shortened a lot. Um, okay, what I have in mind is that I know there's the, the Google Commons um, library which contains uh, also called Guava in the meantime I think which contains something called a multiset and a multiset is essentially what we have here um, as a map so I can put in elements and they will uh, be like multiple times in there so I have a number of occurrence for each element in the set and this is exactly what I want to do here and I think I can reuse that implementation from Guava to like throw out most of the more difficult logic I have here. So let's quickly add Guava to our project so that we can use it. Dependency at Guava. Let's see what it gives me. Guava, Guava, com, Google, Guava. This one, version 18, looks good. Uh, why is this bundle here? Properties. Jar, isn't it? Save. Clips did something. Probably downloaded this dependency. Um, didn't doesn't complain, so it seems to work. Let's try to to refactor this. So I want to replace my books variable here by a multi set actually. Here, like I said, Google Common Collect multi set of Potter book which is going to be books and Guava has the uh, convention of not to use the constructors but to use static methods to instantiate so I have enum multiset I think yes enum multiset without this one um, create from Potter book class okay that's my new books now let's go for the arrows from top to bottom. I can replace this by books.add book. This should take care of counting the multiplicities for me. Next arrow we have is up here the duplication, which is actually right. I want to create a copy of the inner multiset here from the inner multiset books and the Potter book type. I need the Potter book type here I think um, in case the books iter it takes in an iterable here and takes books is empty because then he doesn't know the type to create that's why I put it in here. Okay now this doesn't work anymore because no not casting. I want to make this a multi set of Potter book remaining books. Okay, now the two methods here don't work anymore. So we change the method to multiset remaining books. Um, get number of books is actually now I think that should be the size of the multiset remaining books dot size. Let's see. I think the size should be the, the, like the sum uh, of all the multiplicities. And then I want to have this one change too. Same idea. And this time, of course, I don't want to have the size. But I is there a distinct size method here? I oh, know there's an element set and I want to have the size of the element set. So this should be a regular set instead of a multi set. And this 
uh, yeah, contains all the elements. Okay, so I updated these and now I only need to change the last method here. Um, distinct elements is now just not the key set, but the element set. Uh, I found that out. And actually, actually it's easier, right? Let's see. Um, so I don't have an amount in here and I don't need to reduce anything. I need to, from remaining books, remove. How does that work? I think that the normal remove method removes all instances of a certain uh, object in a set. So I want to remove the book exactly one time. Um, remain mix, re remove the book once should do what I want it. We execute the test and it's actually working. That's nice. Okay, logic still in place. Question is, can I reduce this even further? What happens if I say here, I do this for all Potter books? Because if something's not in here, it should not be a problem if I throw it out. We execute the tests. This actually works. Okay, I kind of like that. It's much shorter, much easier to read. Okay. Now I think that's it for the for the migration to Guava. Other thing I see here, which I um, would like to, to improve is that we have these four rules and actually a fifth rule, if, if we're being honest, I could write this as end one times single book price times 1.0. Um, so we really have five times the same rule. And I see that the number I compare with here is the number I use here. And this number maps to a, um, a discount factor. So I actually would like to pull this factor out into a map. Let's do that. So we have a private static final map here, which maps from an integer to a double from the number of distinct books to the discount factor. I am going to call this discount factor. And this is going to be a map I think I can use Guava for that to create this map in line with a builder. No. I can do new hash map here. But now I have, I know there's a syntax for creating maps in line with Guava. Ah, okay, I just looked it up. So I need to use the mutable map for that without the types. And then we can do a builder. I mean, this is going to be immutable because uh, it's supposed to be constant anyways. So we have, well, what just happened? Um, we have here a builder, put the entries in from five to 0 0.75, from four to 0 0.8, from three to 0 0.9, right? From two, to 0 0.95 and from 1 to 0. Dot, uh, not built. Put from 1 to 0, uh, 1 1.0 and now I build this map. Why doesn't that work? B 
because I need to specify the types. Integer double. Can't infer that apparently. Okay, so we have built our map and now we can use the map actually and say we add here a total plus equals a number of distinct books times single book price times discount factor of a number of distinct books and remove all this down here. Does this work? Yes, it works. So remove this line down here. Let's have a last look at this. Logic still works. We have the factors up here um, included. We go over the number of distinct books, so it will always choose the, the right rule, the maximum rule possible. We have, let's look at this method. The stuff down here is pretty short, so I'm not concerned with that. We have the method up here, which says total um, goes over the remaining books. Like create them all and then reduce them down here, which is okay. I could write that as a for um, loop, but I don't think that would make it more readable because the things are quite long actually. Um, okay, I copy all books. I ask if there are any remaining books. I count the number of distinct books in there. I compute or I add the, the value of those distinct books, remove those distinct books and then loop over. I think that's a pretty short, comprehensive implementation of the Potter Cutter, and I think I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you like this uh, code cutter. Um, if you have ideas how to do differently or uh, have alternate implementations, uh, yeah, let me know. I'm quite interested to see how you solve this problem. Anyways, I hope you like this uh, series of episodes, I think. Um, it's about an hour of implementation time, so it's going to be uh, quite a number of episodes I'm going to cut out of this. Um, yeah, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If not, drop in comments, send me a message, let me know what you think, and I hope to see you next time. Programmers do kung fu fighting. To write good fast.